video, I'm going to introduce you to a way to use AI to find what journal might be best to publish your research article in. So if you're working on writing a research article, I do have a scientific research paper checklist. It's a PDF that walks you step by step through how to write your research paper, including ways to find journals to submit your paper to as well. I will have that link in the description below if you're interested, it's completely free. But today I wanna to introduce you into researcher.life's journal finder. So researcher.life is essentially a collection of a lot of different tools, including paper pal, illustrations, and a lot of other types of tools. So I will have a discount if you're interested in researcher.life. Um, it has a free version, it also has a paid version. I will have a discount code to that paid version down in the description below. So this is researcher.life. Researcher.life is a kind of um, membership that gives you access to a lot of different tools, AI tools for researchers, including things like PaperPal. But they also have a journal finder. So I'm going to use their journal finder and so if you click on it, all you have to do is click use journal finder and it's gonna bring you to this. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a paper that I've published and see where would it recommend me submitting it. So I'm gonna copy its abstract and you can see that I submitted this to the Journal for the American Society of Mass Spectrometry. And so I'm gonna paste this in here and I'm gonna ask it to find the best journals for me. So you can see the very first one that came up was the Journal for the American Society of Mass Spectrometry. So that is not that surprising. Um, it has my abstract up here. You can also toggle off open access or not open access journals. So if you only wanna submit to open access journals, you can toggle that on and off and then you can sort. So this is, the, this is probably sorted by um, match. So the first one is where I actually submitted this paper. Um, this was primarily because I submitted this paper there because um, of a conference I went to, they were doing a special edition for that. So that's actually where this paper got submitted to. Um, and you can bookmark the journal or you can view the journal report. So if you look, it has the aims and scope there. That's really good for anyone trying to um, consider where to publish to. Uh, the topics covered, they have this in here. Again, mass spectrometry is in there. Um, journal specifications. So kind of has the frequency, recently published papers. That's also really helpful if you're looking for what are they recently publishing and have they switched how they um, do different things. You can look at their publications year-wise and then you can compare similar journals, right? So if I compare this to analytical chemistry, which was another place we were considering um, submitting that paper, I can get the report and look at um, the comparison between those. And this is site analysis. So this is powered by site. And you can see kind of how their uh, citations are going. So for their papers, they've had about 8,773 supporting, 210,000 that mention it, and then 582 that are contrasting the different types of errors, corrections, and then some FAQs here. So you can learn a little bit about it and then go to their site, but you can get the basic information from here. The other good match is analytical chemistry. That was another one that we did consider submitting to, but ended up going with um, JASMIS, Journal for the American Society for Mass Spectrometry. Rapid communications in mass spectrometry. I do have a paper in the International Journal of Mass Spectrometry. So all of these, I would say, are pretty good journal um, to submit to. You have the good match, the average matches down here. And so I could bookmark a few of these journals if I'm interested in it. So if I go to my bookmark journals, I would be able to see them in here. So now I can also search by topics. So let's say the same thing steroid. Then we're going to do ion mobility spectrometry. And then we'll do mass spectrometry. And add in all of those so you can see all of those and now I'm going to ask it to find the best paper so when I don't have an actual abstract I just have some general topics in mind um, and you want to kind of cover the like don't ch just choose a single topic when yours is really a combination of three or four different topics together so it looks like this one doesn't give you the matches but it gives you about 96 results so 
Journal of Pharmaceutical and Biomedical Analysis. That could be relevant because of it being analysis of steroids, and that is relevant in biomedical and pharmaceutical. I don't know that journal personally, so I don't know how well it would uh, work. JAX is a very common one, Journal of uh, Analytical Chemistry. That is one that I've considered, I think I've actually submitted to. Analytical letters is a little bit less common of a one. Um, uh, rapid Communications, Journal of Mass Spectrometry. These all appeared in the previous one, these uh, two, or this one in the International Journal. Journal of Mass Spectrometry as well. Mass Spectrometry Reviews, if it's a review, that would be uh, relevant. And you can see a little bit further down, we do get uh, Journal of the American Society for Mass Spectrometry. So all of these are fairly good. I have similar papers published in a lot of these journals. So Journal of Chromatography B. Um, is where one of mine is published as well. So overall, that are all in very similar topics. Overall, I think this does a good job. Um, I don't think I would reorder these, like I would have these resorted, but you can see it's not doing that same good match, average match that it did on the abstract there. I think if you are struggling to figure out anywhere to look for journals, this tool can be really helpful for you to at least find a place to start submitting or start considering. Um, your journals. And that's one of the steps I would do er earlier in the process of writing, because if you're writing for a different journal, you may want to write that paper in a different way and not just write all your papers in the same way and then try to edit it to send to different journals. And if you use something like Zotero, you can always change the citation style really easily, but it does help to originally write in the same citation style and have the formatting all right for the journal that you're planning to submit to. And then always having some some backup journals in case it does get rejected if it's not a good fit for that journal and you thought it was. Whenever you're choosing that journal, you want to look at what is the best fit for you and does it match with those recent papers, which is nice that they give you the report of the recent papers, if we come up, uh, recently published papers. Is what you're submitting matching similarly to the papers that they're talking about now, because they may have switched from five years ago and they may not talk about those same things now that they were talking about five years ago. Or even in my case, I once submitted to Journal of Chromatography A and I was basically told, hey, we've changed which kind of journals we select and this actually fits with Journal of Chromatography B. And I could have figured that out had I looked at their more recent papers and realized they were actually doing something very different than what my paper was doing. So overall, those are really good strategies in order to find a good journal and even have AI help you find a good journal that matches your review or your research article. Again, if you are writing a research article, definitely check out my scientific research paper checklist to help you with that. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.